Uh, and Imam al-Bukhari, why did he write this book? What, what brought it to his mind? The scholars, they mentioned two reasons why he wrote, narrated it. Um, why he wrote this book or why he authored it. The first is that and Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, his teacher, Ishaq ibn Ibrahim, who's known as Ishaq ibn Rahuya, or some scholars, they say Ishaq ibn Rahawiya, ala sirati sibawiya. Al Imam Ishaq ibn Rahuya, who is the teacher of Al Imam al Bukhari, rahimahullah, he brought the idea to Imam al in a gathering where Bukhari was sitting. He said, if only a person came out and wrote a book that's all authentic and the hadith are all correct and authentic, it would have been something good. Bukhari was in the gathering, he heard that, and when he heard that, it hit his heart. It sunk into his heart, and my beloved brothers and sisters, he then wrote the most authentic book on the face of this earth. And this shows the aspiration of these people. Things like that will wake them up, and they will want to do something. For us, if you tell a brother, well, your, mashallah, your, your memorization is actually good. You see, I can go memorize the Quran. Ten years later, if you come back, he still hasn't memorized the Quran. And the poet, he said, Anyone who has high aspirations, then everything he endures whilst he's taking, um, trying to achieve his goal, he finds it joy. He likes it. He enjoys it. If you have high aspiration, you set yourself a goal. Every pain that comes whilst you're trying to achieve that goal, you find it, you enjoy it. You don't find pain or you don't find hardship through it. And as the poet said, Knowledge enters the heart of every single body. There's no restriction. You can be from whatever background you want. You can be of whatever age you want. You can be from whatever particular community you want. Knowledge will enter the heart of every single person. The only person who knowledge is prohibited from is the person who comes with so many sins that they take their hearts. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Bukhari was born only nine months, just like you were born nine months. He came out of the womb of his mother not knowing anything. Just like you came out of the womb of your mother not knowing anything. Allah says in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah brought you out of the womb of your mothers not knowing anything. So no one had a, uh, 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 no one is start the game, no one had a head start. Everybody came out knowing nothing. But where Bukhari passed you and passed me and passed all of us is because he had high aspirations. And he didn't just dream. As they say, a dream is half the bottle. But rather what he did was, he actually went after his dream. He implemented his dreams. He set himself, he set himself goals and he made sure he fulfilled those, those goals. So that was the first reason why Bukhari wrote his authentic book. The second reason is because they said he had a dream. And in the dream what he saw was, the Prophet wasallam flies were coming to the Prophet's face. Wasallam. And Imam al-Bukhari, he had, uh, what's it called, this thing you... Huh? A swat. Yeah, you know, you get rid of the flies. He had that. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he was getting rid of the flies, not touching the Prophet's face. So when he woke up, he asked the interpretation of this dream. He said, what is this dream that I had? And they told him, you are going to defend the Prophet sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam, And you're going to make sure that no one comes and attributes to him that which he didn't say alayhi salatu wasalam. And this reminds me of what I read by Imam al-Barzali rahimahullah, Alamuddin al-Barzali rahimahullah, who min talamidat al-Imam ibn Taymiyyah. It was from the students of Imam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. He saw... Al Imam, he saw Al Imam Al Dhahabi rahimahullah one day. He saw Imam Al Dhahabi, uh, Alamuddin Al Barzali saw Al Imam Al Dhahabi. You guys don't know what Imam Al Dhahabi is. The great historian and the great scholar of hadith. Uh, Barzali saw uh, Dhahabi writing something. He saw him writing on a place. And then he looked at him. And at this particular time, Al Imam Al Dhahabi was into the field of Qiraat, the recitations of the Quran and the dialects of the Quran. So when he saw him, he said to him, Qiraatu, kitabatuka, you're writing. You write like the people of Hadith. Like you write like the scholars of Hadith. And he looked at him and he said, Really? And he said, Yes. From that day onwards, Al Imam al Dhabi embarked on the path of learning Hadith. Allahu Akbar. Just one word like that changed their lives. So when Bukhari was told that you're going to defend the Prophet as a uh, Hadith, it, it made him go forward. And it made him fulfill his dream. And it made him achieve. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah raises these people. And the people of knowledge, Allah raises them. Allah also says, Allah says, Enough to show you the virtue of knowledge it is, is that every single person will claim knowledge. If I said to anybody here right now, you're ignorant, he will get angry. That's enough to show you how powerful and how good knowledge is. Everyone wants to be part of the idea of being a scholar. 
and to show you how low ignorance is, everyone here would not like to be attributed to ignorance. Sahih? That's enough to show you how bad and how low ignorance is, my beloved brothers and sisters.